information to help you run your business better and improve your marketing campaigns. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer, and thank you for joining me on Hank's Marketing and Business Tips. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Doreen Morin Van Dam. I met her speaking at Converge South last year, which is a conference on marketing, which is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We actually met up before, during, and after, had some great conversations, and we kept in touch since. And I'm shocked that I did not have her on earlier. She is the owner of Morin Media, and she's based in South Carolina. And what we're going to talk about today is repurposing content. I know I'm always talking about just making content and putting content out there. And a lot of people struggle sometimes to even create content where I think Doreen's going to be able to help us by telling us how we can repurpose and use our content. Doreen, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to always talk to you, but it's great now to talk to you on camera. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, to what you just said, um, it's a struggle sometimes for people to put out one piece of content. You know, you put your heart and soul into, um, say, creating a video. And then you create that video and you put it on Facebook. And then, then what? And that's what I can help with. Um, what do you do with your content? I'm going to interview you. What do you do? Right. For me, I just keep putting helpful and useful information out there. And you really made me think when we were talking before we hit record, talking about repurposing content because I'm bad at that. I'll go back every now and then and pull out an old tweet, pull out an old post, or maybe even look at a video that I created a while back and put it out there. But you know what? I don't do it enough. And a lot of stuff I create can be evergreen or good for a long time. Uh, and some of it might be a little more relevant, but it could be relevant next year in relation to whatever time frame it was. If I talk about spring or first quarter, I can always reuse that. And I feel like you're calling me out and I know you are, and you probably call a lot of people out, but that's good because we need to be reminded that if we create content, it doesn't mean it's one and done and it's just in the archives. No one's going to go digging through your archives to pull up content. Therefore, if you repurpose it, you give it new life. That's, that's exactly it. So the first part of repurposing content is thinking about what content you create. So when you, before you create it, I always suggest to people, let's talk about strategy and a plan on what you want to, uh, what places do you want to go to? Do you want to be on YouTube? Do you want to be on Facebook? Are you going to be on Instagram? Um, and then for example, if we talk about video, when you create that video, um, it's going to live either on, um, YouTube or, um, Vimeo, Vimeo, whatever, wherever you want to live it. But then once it's there, that, that doesn't stop. So you, you create a video, you put it on YouTube, um, you then embed it in your website. Now, if you have a blog, that's great. Then you put it as, as a blog post, you then transcribe that video. So then you also get the written SEO as well as, you know, that video on your blog. If you don't have a blog, you should have a whole page with video content on your blog. Um, then say your video is 10 minutes long. Can there be little 30 second spots that can be your little teasers that you can use either in Instagram stories or on Instagram? Um, you also want to natively upload that same video to Facebook because Facebook doesn't really like YouTube links anymore. It used to be right. fine, but not anymore. So that same file you uploaded to YouTube, you're now going to upload to Facebook. It doesn't mean you all do this the same day. You can have a whole strategy this whole month. We're going to talk about this topic. So we're releasing it on YouTube. Three days later, it's on the blog. Next week, we're going to upload it to Facebook. Um, before we upload it to Facebook, we're going to do three 30-second blurbs on Instagram, three days in a row on stories to get people ready. Then we tell them to go to Facebook. Then we're doing a Facebook Live, pointing back to the blog. See how this all works together? Right. Then you can make cool images that you're going to put on the blog. Say the images are pinnable. So then you can pin this blog post um, with that video embedded onto Pinterest 
I can go on and on, but the idea is that you, you first have to know where do you live, where do you create, where do you want to put content, and then the content that you have, you can put it in a lot of different places. I love going back to old content. Say that you have a blog that has been active for four years. You know, this is about written content. And you want to kind of put new life into that blog. Um, there's several ways you can go about it. You can make videos of old blog posts. Say you had three tips on um, how to, three ways to be more um, efficient in your business. Right. You can make that a blog, a video. Right. And then insert that video in the old blog post. And now the old blog post is renewed and now you can drive traffic there. Are you um, talking another, about Lumen 5 for that? That's like a tool that actually takes your blog post and puts it into like video format where it puts a text on there and animates it. Um, that's a great way to do it and it creates less work. Is that something that you would recommend? That's absolutely, you can do that or you can do a Facebook Live about that blog post and then download the Facebook Live and put that in that blog post. Um, I once had a summer intern, I had her change out or add um, new images. I had rebranded and she did like, you know, maybe five or 10 blog posts a day. She, I had a template made, she made new images um, for my blog and then we started repinning it and um, putting them on different boards on Pinterest that drove tons of traffic. So if you've already written um, articles, you can put new life into them. Another great thing to do is, um, especially if you have an intern or you have a helper or you have a block of time, is go back to your old blogs and find quotes um, and make nice. beautiful images put quotes on there, if, you know, and you can add those to Facebook. Um, you can add them to Instagram. You can tweet out and again, put that link there back to the blog post. So instead of constantly thinking of new things to write about the content that you create, it's really quality over quantity initially. Right. So if you do one good content idea per week, you can cut it up in so many different ways and serve it up. We call it serve it up in bite side pieces to the right um, platform. Uh, that's really a great way. And, and then you're really branded over all the different places. We haven't even talked about LinkedIn. Of course you can put right. quotes on there and, you know, put pictures of you creating the content, um, you know, really depending on where you go. But, um, I used to blog four or five times a week and I was just writing so many different articles and my blog was very active, but it, it, it I, I feel like I was just peddling and peddling and peddling. Um, whereas if I just put the wind in my back and just pedaled really slow, I probably would have gotten there even faster. Um, just doing one blog post a week and then repurposing it everywhere. Right. Um, so that's, that's really what we talk about repurposing. And, you know, if you like going live, um, you know, people should be aware that you can download your live. You right. can then edit the video and, and cut that in little pieces. You can add an intro and an outro. And now you have a YouTube video, um, right. you know, and then upload that live that you did on Facebook right to YouTube. Um, same with Zoom. You can record Zoom. You can download it. That can become... Um, you know, a YouTube video. Um, I would suggest that you kind of figure out your format. Um, it's great on YouTube if you have kind of the same format for your videos, or even if you have two or three different formats, but that people start getting familiar with right. how you're doing your videos. Um, but yeah, there's so many different ways that you can repurpose old old content and put new life into it and really drive traffic on your website. Wow, Dorian just dropped so many value bombs in the last few minutes there. Uh, and it energizes me because, you know, I have a book. I could be taking a lot of excerpts from my book and sharing that out because, you know, I recently heard, you know, don't sell your book. What you wanna do is sell the idea or the ideas that are in your book and that sells the book for itself, which I need to start taking some of your, your information and doing that and taking stuff I have going back into the archives, pulling them out, putting it out there and looking at my manuscript and just pulling some of these great tweetable, quotable uh, items and nuggets from my book and just putting them out there. And 
When you were speaking at Converge South, I heard you talk about older content and archived content, and you were talking about organizing it, and I think that was very interesting. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, you, you spoke in regards to organize your content so you could find it easy? Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, what a lot of people do is, um, they just download things, you know, you might create images and then you, you know, you call it mother's day image or whatever. Um, I always make sure that when I upload pictures, um, to my, I have a Dropbox. Um, so, uh, I have tons and tons of files. Um, but if you upload, say, 50 pictures at the same time, and they're called picture one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're never going to find them again. So you have to tag them. So everything is searchable, um, and then you can reuse it. I have some clients that I've worked with as social media manager for four or five years. Now I might want to update an image. I might want to, right. you know, put a new logo on it or put a new picture. But if I have an old image. Um, from Mother's Day in 2015, it gives me an idea what I've done and it's much easier for me to recreate something. Or if I'm really in a hurry, I can use an older image. Um, but if you don't know where it is, <laughs> you, you don't have that. Exactly. So um, every client has um, several folders. One is content that I create. Um, another con one is content they sent me. Another one is user generated content because there's a lot of content. So for example, um, I am a social media manager for a soccer club. Um, a lot of the soccer parents send me pictures. They are put in a separate folder. If I ever have to prove that I have permission to share those pictures, they're in that folder. Um, I don't necessarily want to save the email, but I label them um, XYZ team sent by such and such parent. And so then they're in that folder. So I don't nice. put them all together and bunch them, but I know where they are. And then, um, you know, you have to clean up your files. <laughs> you have to go in every couple of months and delete things. You know, when a client leaves, um, I give them the folder if they want it. Um, we have shared folders. Um, and then, you know, you just give them those folders and, you know, remove yourself from the Dropbox, but then they have access um, so yeah, it's, it's very important as, um, as you do a lot of content that you have a powerful machine, whether it's a PC or a Mac, and that you have backup systems. Um, another thing that I like to talk about is, uh, you know, making sure I, I have like triple backup. I have everything is on my machine. I have a um, I have a Mac, so I have a passport time machine attached to it right. that when I travel, that stays at home. So if something happens to my Mac, I get a new Mac and I plug in my machine and I should have all my files. I also have everything to Dropbox, which is great because then, you know, from Drop, I have my Dropbox app on my phone. So when I create stuff on my Mac, then I can go to, you know, I put everything in Dropbox and I can pull it right on my phone and post it to Instagram. There's just some little um, systems there that are helpful, but your filing system is becomes very important. It's for productivity, um, especially when you do a lot of videos. You've got to make sure that you have a system for naming everything, and then especially if you want to repurpose content, you need to be able to find it, and then right. um, you know. Yeah, and these days with the ability to actually tag above and beyond a title actually helps. You know, years ago you didn't you weren't able to do that. You had to rely on just having a specific title, maybe a date or something with the file. But now with tagging, it uh, makes things so much easier. Even just a finder in uh, on my Mac, I could find things easier. And I've recently moved to I use Time Machine like you do on a separate hard drive, and then I have another kind of server-based uh, hard drive that I have connected to my router. Save everything to there, then I back that up. I, I used to use like Carbonite. An online backup, but it got expensive. Uh, but now, you know, once a week, I back up that hard drive and take that off site. So I always have that fresh update that I need. But I've been moving stuff that I don't use very often, but I feel like, like you said, maybe it's from uh, Thanksgiving two years ago, and I might want to go back and look at it. Now yeah. I'll have that. I used to just save them on my phone, but then I realized I was using up a lot of storage. Uh, but now it automatically backs up to this hard drive I have. And um, as long as it's tagged, I can go back and find it. 
Yeah. So something else that just made me think of um, content creation. If you're in the content creation business, if you own a business and you want to be found online, you have to create your own content. And it's a process that's con that's a continuous process. So one of the things that I tell people is always look for ways and time to take your own stock photos. Um, it's something stock photo, uh, you know, you can buy stock pictures, you know, there's of course, if you have a budget, that's great, but it would be great if it's branded for yourself. So smaller businesses, I encourage them to get, even if it's with their smartphone, but get a list of pictures that they might need in the future. For example, in January, I will send a list to all of my clients and say, Valentine's Day is coming up. For next month, I need pictures of your store of employees dressed in red or all your red products or anything with hearts on it and send me those now. I will keep a file. I might use some for Valentine's Day. Same thing um, when Memorial Day runs, you know, rolls around. If you have anything pa patriotic, I can also, of course, use that for 4th of July. But I'd rather have real pictures of in the business um, and have them send it to me. And I just, again, I tag them and I save them. And so I have one client who has, um, you know, kind of a very basic office, but she likes to garden. So she has a little pot outside and she puts little flags in it or little hearts in it. And she always sends me those pictures. And those are great stock photos for me to use throughout the years. Um, they're not going to look like anybody else's. It's branded for her business and it's just an easy way to, to create quick content. I use those pictures to put quotes on, um, or anything. So if, if you're just getting started with content creation, it's one thing that I would say, get, um, a list of stock photos that you want and start making your own stock photo, um, file system for your business. And that would include a picture of your front door of your work vehicle, of your desk, um, you know, um, let me see what else, maybe your computer area, uh, maybe your coffee machine, your coffee, favorite coffee mug at work, um, you know, a client meeting, any of those things uh, to get you started. And that list can become a lot longer depending on what your, what your business is. Um, but start compiling those pictures before you need them. That is a great idea. You just keep coming with the value. You know, I, you need to be a regular. Maybe we need to be co-hosts or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there you great. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about content. See, this is what I love. You know, we were just earlier talking about, um, you know, being passionate about something. And last year, I really ventured into live video. And I don't mind doing it. I actually love it. I, I, I um, But it's, I, I really like the content. I like the ideas. I like helping people. Um, putting their story out. So that's, right. that's really what I'm, and I've been in content creation for seven years. So um, yeah, systems work right. <laughs> once you set up a system. Um, and there's just so many things that took me a long time to figure out that I love giving people that aha moment, you know? Right. So I think I'm going to change my tune, you know, for the last few months, it's always been just go out, create more content, be awesome and record yourself and put it out there. Now it's going to be that, but also repurpose what you have because what you've done before is still awesome, but people just haven't seen it. You know, if I posted something back in 2015 for, for St. Patrick's day, who's going to go back and actually look at that and be like, Oh wow. You know, this is, this was great back then. And it's still great. Now they yeah. need to see that again. And you know, with Facebook's algorithms and Twitter, Instagram, whichever channel you want to talk about, they are using these algorithms and pushing up content that people are engaging with. Older stuff is not going to keep coming back up. You need to do it for yourself. Like you said, and maybe tweak it a little bit, change it a little bit more. Use maybe your stock photos that you were just talking about taking and adding some of your quotes to that that you're pulling from your blog posts. Goes on and on. Like you said, you got my brain going today. And you know, you gave me so much value for what I want to do and what I want to do for my audience and people that connect with me. And hopefully I'll start repurposing content. And if I don't, maybe people call me out and you can too as well. So <laughs> I really appreciate you being on today. And I think this is really a lot of value and great information. Okay. And I'm going to give you one more thing. Um, I do email marketing on a small scale for some of my clients. And since I also do social media marketing for them, I always know when their newsletter is coming out. So the content that I create 
that I know is going to go in the newsletter, I'm also using it on social media. I might change the size of an image, but I'm always thinking ahead. That what's the theme of the newsletter going to be? Okay, well, I'm going to use that theme on social media and I can repurpose some of the images, some of the pictures, grab some of my own sock photos. It makes it much easier, easier to put the email newsletter out. It all kind of works right. together. Um, and then you know, if there's a special story in the newsletter, I can, again, repurpose that and make that into a blog post or a mm -hmm. um, Facebook post or a special LinkedIn something. So they do all kind of work together. And even um, with email marketing and the social media marketing, it's just you can say the same thing, just say it in a different way on each platform. Yeah, you want to reach your audience where they are. And with this day and age, People don't mind if they see similar content in different channels. We're, we're used to that these days. And if you think people are going to get turned off because you're using something similar on Twitter that you used on LinkedIn, that's not the case. They'll just say, like, no, go on. You know? Or maybe if it's really engaging, they are actually going to read it on one of those channels. Right. As long as you don't post it all at the same time, auto post it. Right. Uh, if, if I see at 10 o'clock, um, see you post something to LinkedIn that was also a tweet that's also on Facebook and you've automated it all at 10 a.m. I might actually unfollow you somewhere. But if at 8 a.m. I might have seen something on LinkedIn scroll by at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm on Instagram and I see a quote from that same article. And then the next day you do a Facebook Live about the same topic. Now I'm intrigued. Right. Well, I'm a little on. guilty of what you said though every now and then. I'll, you know, sometimes I just need to get this out there and I do that. And, <laughs> eh, you know, it's not the best thing to do. But like you said, for if you want to be, if you want to get the best engagement, you know, change it up and, and position them in different times. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would recommend. And it's okay to use some of the same stuff. But, um, you know, even if it's the same image, just say something different about it in a different way. Right. Um, or put a filter over it or, you know, something. <laughs> well, Dorian, it was great to have you on. I hate to cut a little bit short, but I definitely want to That's have okay. you on again at some point because yes. I think that was so much value. What I want to do is uh, let you explain how people can find you on the internet and connect with you. Okay. Well, everywhere um, that I branded myself, more in media, I guess it's backwards on the picture if you're watching this, um, but I have my hashtag up there. Um, if you're listening, moreinmedia.com. Um, I'm more in media on Twitter, more in media on Instagram. It's a play on words for my last name, Morin. Um, and um, that's really it. If you're looking for me, if you see a girl with orange glasses, that's me. I have the same picture everywhere. I wear orange glasses in real life. It's an homage to um, growing up in the Netherlands being Dutch. So you'll know it's me when you see the girl with orange glasses. Awesome. And I'll put some links into the show notes so everybody can find you. If you want to hear previous episodes, head over to hankhoffmeyer.com slash Alexa. You could find me all over the interwebs. I'm on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. Just look for that. I always like to mention, since I work for Eye Contact, if you're looking for an email service provider, use the code HMBT for a $30 credit if you do sign up for an account. And we'd appreciate to have you as a customer. And if you want to reach out to me and talk to me in regards to email marketing, please do. Other than that, it was a pleasure having you and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day.